All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here we are. Bob Grows, beautiful South Florida. Check out them mangoes, right? Anyway, back to why we're here. We're here for my hydroponic garden on the back side of my house. Uh, you can see obvious additions here. We have the old system, the newer system, and the newest one here. I added this to the circuit. Uh, basically what we have here are old containers that I had. Uh, these were initially deep water culture. And here you can see the lids cut out. And I decided to do a media bed. Um, I've always been intrigued by them. And I think they're, I, I really enjoy the simplicity of them. So basically uh, these have uh, one inch uni seals. One inch PVC tubing, they're both connected through the uni seals. Now you can see right there. And basically the water comes in through this half inch pipe here, PVC. It goes into this bed of uh, pebbles. Underneath the pebbles, there is, there is stone, right? The stone here because pebbles are awfully expensive and I don't want to, have to fill the whole thing up with pebbles. So basically the way this works, water comes in here. Uh, this is a bed of pebbles and rock. And the water line is just below the surface. So as you can see before, when I start digging, we find the water. But the top part is actually dry. So basically I put three plants in here. Um, all these are soil plants. I just kind of dug down majestic red, large cherry pepper, and this is a jalapeno. I don't know why the label's on the back side. This is a very uh, sad looking jalapeno because um, it's been on the windowsill. The plants don't really do well on the windowsill because uh, these have some type of tint on them, a uh, filter. So there it is. It's two currently. Uh, this is open for further expansion if necessary, if I want to, if this works out. But I like that you can just dig up, put your plant in, and continue. These are in soil. I don't even know if you can do this, but I just put them in there. Uh, I will be putting in normal hydroponic plants as well. This one's mostly empty. This is covering, I'm sure you guys are wondering, this is covering a little plant that I put in there. I don't even know what it is, but I just have it on there covering because it's a really hot day and the sun is beating down on the poor uh, seedling. Um, so basically this just flows through here, off this way, into this one. This is what determines the height. It's just an upriser uh, that comes in through the side. I could extend it, the water level will come up. And this is a little net cup that I put as a grate so nothing falls in there. I'll just cover him up. This is just a little something that I put here uh, so we can see inside and see if the water level is actually there. Mind you, I could just dig for it. But we'll be adding some plants here. And uh, this ends up draining back into my main reservoir for this side of the system. That system over there is on another reservoir. And the feed, as you can see, tees off from the feed from the rest of the plants. Uh, it's been a while since we did an update, so I'll show you guys what's happened. Uh, here's the bigger reservoir. I believe this is 27 gallon. Uh, let's go in here and see. There it is. Where's the pump? Uh, pump is right here. I put a type of filter on there. It's a sock with a net cup because again, the sediment was clogging up my little nozzles. Uh, much easier to fix than that one, but it still clogged it up. So I made, I rigged up a little filter sock um, and it seems to be working fine. I guess just regularly you gotta come out here and, and rinse it off. This is, I believe this is Earthly Girl Tomato. There's no actual tomatoes on here yet, but if you see from my previous video, I don't know, maybe a month ago, this has grown a lot, tremendous. This is the Cherokee uh, purple, right? the Cherokee tomato. And you can see these things are gonna be monsters. They get really ugly, they get really purple, dark red. And this plant is gonna be absolutely crazy, which is great because my other one over there that's been giving me fruit, well, tomatoes, uh, is looking a little sad. Here's another one, this is cayenne pepper. It's most recently taken off. Two of the seedlings died, one made it. This one here I believe is ghost pepper, right? Uh, 
uh, again, for the previous video, you can see tremendous growth. This is just a normal DWC setup, recirculating, uh, no aeration. I'm considering aeration, maybe that'll help uh, these guys grow faster, maybe larger fruit, uh, peppers or tomatoes, but we'll see. I really don't want a noisy pump out here. Here you can see bell peppers. Uh, there's one bell pepper. Doesn't quite look like one, but that's what it is. You see the little feed nozzles there. Someone asked me how I secure this. Uh, I don't. It just kind of sits there and uh, gravity does its job. So that's it for this side. Let's head over. So we got the bok choy taking off as usual, right? Looking really good. You can see the color is a little strange. I checked the PPM. I bought a PPM meter. It's over there. And it was at 170. So I gave it nutrients. I filled it up. And now it's about 1300. So these guys should just go back to being normal. Uh, here's a super sad cilantro that's going to seed. Uh, here's an older bell pepper. Here is one of the figs. Looking absolutely lovely. All right, this is an NFT system. Drops from the top, a little rain tower. Uh, I'm cloning basil inside. I'll probably be putting the basil here. The basil works really well in the NFT system. Uh, pepperoncini, they're turning red. This one, I believe, I really don't know what this is. This might be another ghost pepper? Or it might be, yeah, I think it's another ghost pepper. This is my oldest system on this side. Uh, this is a Dutch bucket. This is the only Dutch bucket I have. As you can see, there's no water in there. There's just media. And uh, what happened with this is that the nozzles got clogged, right? Right in there, that got clogged and this didn't get water, it became very wilted, it still is as you can see. And uh, what happens is that it folds over and it, it breaks, it breaks the little uh, stem, the little vine, and then it just, see, there's another kink. So I trimmed off a lot of the foliage today, we're just gonna try to ride it out. Uh, if, I mean, if it's its time, then it's its time. Uh, I've had this plant, I don't know almost uh, 10 months now. So it's done its job. You can see this thing is easily like 20 feet long. It's just been coiling and coiling and coiling. It goes up and it comes back down and continues to coil. But still plenty of fruit on there. It's just looking a little sad. But this segues us over to our jalapenos. This looks like Christmas lights on here. We got some red ones, we got green ones. Got stressed ones. Oh, this is gonna be super hot, super tiny. All kinds of new little guys. Looking absolutely beautiful. Maybe we'll just put another pepper over here or add a, a fourth, a uh, fifth bucket and just do peppers on this side and keep the tomatoes over there. I'm not sure. There's a lot of choices. I kind of really want to do a. Uh, a papaya. I want to see how big we can grow a papaya. I don't think there's much um, information about growing papayas in hydroponics. We're already killing it here with the figs. Um, no fruit, but this is still next level. Uh, so I was thinking about doing papaya. We have papaya in the backyard. Uh, it's growing in soil and it's absolutely delicious. Let's go in here. I also added a little filter sock to this one. You can see all the sediment and sand and whatever else is built up over time. It's not really that serious, right? Some people really stress about changing out the reservoir every so often. They stress about algae. They stress about a lot of things. Um, cooling, right? Is the water too hot? The water feels fine to me, probably like 80 or seven, uh, yeah, probably like 85 degrees. It's cool to the touch. Uh, I definitely wouldn't swim in it, but there you have it, guys. Let's take a look at one of these. See, there's algae in there, but it grows fine. Let's see this one. Yeah, sometimes I just take out the whole plant and I spray it down with the hose, and it just takes off all the algae off the roots and, you know, back to square one. So there you have it. I just really want to show you guys 
the new media bed. I'm very excited about this. I think the, the, the ease of putting in plants is what really sells this. Mind you, all this media is expensive, but the ease of putting it in is, is fantastic. All right, guys, remember, subscribe, like the video. We're gonna continue putting out updates, and every now and then we're gonna keep expanding. So stick around. Peace.